You know, I will say this. It is a little bit refreshing to have a president that has dementia uh, because he'll just spill the beans sometimes. And I think that's what he did uh, just today. He actually went on to use the phrase new world order and say we're entering into a new world order. This is, of course, an allusion to what we've been experiencing since 2020. Uh, This is uh, something called Agenda 2030, the Great Reset. Uh, This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is a wide open public discussion uh, being put forth by the UN and the World Economic Forum because of COVID-19, which in many ways seem to be some sort of, I mean, let's just put it this way. It seemed to be some sort of calculated and uh, staged type of situation um, in which, you know, you had all of these activities right before the outbreak occurred uh, in, in 2019. So, you know, you had event 201 that was put on by the university of John Hopkins, Bill and Melinda Gates foundation and the world economic forum in October of 2019, that literally simulated a global pandemic and what, you know, all the corporate entities, the governments, officials, institutions would do in that scenario. It was sort of like a test run drill, uh, on what they would do in the event of a global pandemic of a coronavirus outbreak. And yeah, that was in October of, of 2019. And then it just happened two, two months later. Yeah, yeah. Give me a break. So, and then they already have like many of the patents for the vaccines and stuff for M- MRNA and the, you know, COVID vaccines already ready to go since like 2017, by the way. Um, and you know, a lot of these institutions are now planning for something called uh cyber polygon, which is being put forth in, uh, it's like a drill similar to event 201. Um, in regards to a future cyber attack, like major cyber attack, that's going to shut down aspects of society. It's hard to say exactly which aspects of society and like industrial systems, you know, this cyber attack that is sort of impending will, will entail, but you know, they're, they're preparing for that. And that was in October of 2021. They held that. And now they're talking about this cyber attack. They're going to blame it on Russia. Um, you know, maybe Russia will actually do it, you know, but this is all part of the plan. This is part of a great reset initiative to build a new world order. Um, and, and, you know, they're very open about this. This isn't like, you know, the thing is, it's just the media doesn't talk about it. You know, they're instructed not to highlight this, but, you know, they think at least some of them in, in these global institutions and, you know, who, who have installed, by the way, uh, regimes all uh, all across the, the world, like the Biden regime. This is why Biden uses Build Back Better during his campaign, which is the same exact motto and the same exact slogan that the World Economic Forum was using for the Great Reset. You know, out of the COVID-19 pandemic, we can build back better. And this is where Biden got that slogan. And You notice all the other leaders across the whole world were using the same slogan, right? You had Boris Johnson saying, we got to build back better. You had Justin Trudeau saying, we have to build back better. One of Biden's flagship initiatives in Congress, he was trying to get passed, was the Build Back Better agenda, which I'm pretty sure actually failed in Congress. Because in our Congress here in the U.S., we still have like such a good old boy freedom, freedom culture that there are people in Congress, especially the House, that just aren't bought off because there's too many of them. And, you know, a lot of them do sort of hold and maintain their constitutional um, loyalty to the country. Uh, so, so you know, you have this, uh, you know, these these global leaders um, really don't like the United States because there there is sort of a really stubborn mentality here. It's still stuck. They think we're still stuck and, and we need to progress into this new world order, right? Uh, like Canada is doing, like Australia is doing, like uh, the UK to a certain extent. Um, but even even in the UK, there's you know this is a little bit of resistance too. Um, so so we have this going on, and you know a lot of these events we're seeing, a lot of it is planned. You know, so let, let's talk about what Biden talked about earlier today, talking about we're entering a new world order. You know, this was deemed to be some sort of conspiracy theory buzzword now since George H.W. Uh, Bush used it in, I think, 1991, where he discussed, you know, we have the real opportunity for a new world order after the fall of the Soviet Union and all of this. And like, you know, we are, uh, you know, a thousand points of light. We can do this. Let It's a, a world of where it's governed by the uh, rule of law and not the 
uh, rules of the jungle and all of this. Of course, these are all just platitudes. To, this is, they use a lot of this, right? It's all about control, but they use these platitudes like we got to save the earth and we have to make it so everybody plays fairly. And, you know, we have to build a sustainable future that, you know, is very highlighting uh, inclusivity and, and, and equity. You know, they love that inclusivity, equity, racial justice. Uh, and, and, you know, these are just empty platitudes. That's what, what they are. But hey, let's play this, okay? Um, yeah, people are having a field day with this. Uh, Biden saying the new world order today. So check it out. We are at an inflection point, I believe, in the world economy. Not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. As one of them, as the, uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946. And uh, since then, we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people dying, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're going to there's going to be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it. And we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. So this is um, something that you know is is well known at this point. Obviously, we're seeing a huge shift in in so many things. Um, not only inflation and gas prices and all of this, but, you know, you had with the COVID-19 uh, sort of pandemic, uh, this new initiative come about uh, where the normalization of the government having control of your everyday life, uh, it's, it's really getting people used to that. Now, of course, here in the United States, that was pulled back a little bit or quite a bit at this point, but you know, they're going to try to keep moving that forward. It just came out today, actually, that Jen, Jen Psaki, uh, White House press secretary and Hillary Clinton, both triple vaccinated, by the way, d uh, tested positive for COVID. Um, so, you know, I think that that is coming back into the picture with, you know, media reports. And I think you're going to see it uh, reemerge, especially next winter. And I think you might see a couple of states try to do like modified lockdowns or mask mandates and things like this. Um, but I, I don't see it fully coming back, even with a, like a harsh variant coming back around, you know, if they're going to try to really hype it back up again, I don't see like the entire United States locking back down ever at this point right now. I mean, uh, like, like it was in 2020, but you will have, I'm sure Canada, Australia, Canada and Australia, they're in a lot of trouble in many ways, but you know, uh, this is coming back around, but you know, with this new world order, this new world economic order, we're going to talk about some of the things going on in the world right now, especially with the U S dollar. And just, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about this Bloomberg opinion article where they actually wrote this. This is in their Twitter post. And this it just shows you how detached and sort of pompous these, these uh, elitists are, right? And many of them work in the media. And these are people that had everything handed to them growing up. And, you know, they, they have their degrees from university. They never had to work for anything they had. They don't contribute anything useful to society except uh, propaganda, Right where they write these opinion articles in Bloomberg or in BuzzFeed or in uh, you know the Daily Beast or or uh, the New York Times and the, it's like this faux intellectualism right where they try to like sound smart and just toe the toe the line right they just toe the line and by the way we know from Operation Mockingbird and many other things that have been declassified in the past that you know many of these media analysts. Uh, that work for these different companies and the corporate news outlets like CNN and stuff. You had Anderson Cooper, you know, they're former CIA. So, you know, this is kind of like a, uh, like, a, like it's, it's very tainted with like a deep state globalist mentality. And th these people are just totally detached. So a lot of times the mask comes off and, and, and it shows like how detached they are. And this is a great example of this. You have out of Bloomberg today that this uh, article and it says here, inflation stings the most if you earn less than 300K. Here's how to deal, <laughs> right? And like, a mat, like they're just flipping their nose at you, right? Here's how, how to deal. Take the bus. Don't buy in bulk. 
try lentils instead of meat. Nobody said this would be fun. Like, <laughs> get used to it. So this is their answer. Like, these are supposed to be our leaders, okay? These are supposed to be the people that figure out how to fix this. Instead, they tell you that, look, just start eating beans instead of meat. This was never supposed to be fun, guys. Like, like th we're collapsing society, all right? Like, get used to it. Like, you're just going to have to learn to like it, okay? Like, shut up. I, like, take the bus, okay? Don't buy in bulk. And I don't know why they would tell you to not buy in bulk. Uh, that one kind of confuses me. I mean, we can read the article, I guess. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I think you get the gist of it. It's just, you know, these people really do not care. It's like Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake, you know? Um... So it talks about the inflation, and we can talk all day about the inflation. I, mean, I don't really have to talk that much about the numbers. You know, everyone knows. All you have to do is go to the grocery store, go buy gas. Of course, gas, part of that is um, because of uh, Biden's initiatives to make America no longer energy independent. And also, uh, you know, uh, the, the Russia situation plays into it a little bit. But, you know, a lot of that is is the fault of Biden. But, I mean, just everything else, the prices of food. But, you know, it's going to get a lot worse because if we're going to talk about food, we can talk about inflation, too. Uh, and we'll talk a little more about that. But I do want to, like, switch gears to food here because this is going to affect you directly. And this is something, like, I really like to talk about things like this because because it's like I have a stake in this, like, big time. And, uh, you know... <laughs> No pun intended there, you know, because um, I have a stake in this, though, because, you know, I just switched back to carnivore. Like my diet is very important to me because I kind of have gut issues. You know, I, I dealt with Lyme disease for like like I still kind of deal with it sometimes or at least deal with some of the uh, uh, gut issues because I was on antibiotics on and off for, for, for years. Right. So, you know, gut issues. So gut issues has always been a thing for me. And so like switching back to carnivore diet now, or at least mostly carnivore, I still have, you know, some, uh, like some, a little bit of veggies and stuff every now and then, every now and then I'll have an apple. I do like apples every now and then, but like, so it's very, very clean diet though. And, you know, I'm trying to cut like gluten and wheat and uh, any kind of carbs or anything like that out of my diet. So I'm feeling much better now, by the way. So, you know, a lot of these shortages for food, it's going to affect uh, feed for livestock, for, for you know, for, for meat, right? Right. So, and, and for everything really, you know, and when you have shortages in, in, in corn and wheat and grains and, and all of these things and, and soybeans, it, it affects not only the prices of, you know, your the things that are actually made out of wheat and corn and soybeans, but also the, the prices of meat because that's what a lot of uh, livestock is fed, right, on, based on these sort of um, large quantity um, feeds, right? So now we have... A, a huge fertilizer shortage coming and this is going to affect every every crop and there was already uh prices rising for fertilizer last year and it was already getting really bad and now because of the whole russia ukraine situation which of course isn't it interesting like if you look at like i heard somebody talking about this yesterday and i and i did look into it a little bit um right when putin decided to invade ukraine it was the 22nd into the 23rd of february um in 2022 and it was right when like pluto came back in it was some sort of astrological line uh, alignment in the stars that actually said that uh, you know, war was likely to happen. It's really interesting how the world leaders seem to plan things according to like astrology. And I, I mean, it's really interesting. Uh, I'm not like an expert at that kind of thing, but it's pretty obvious that like many of the big, big world leaders in the world and, and people installed in government that make the decisions, uh, they plan things like this based on astrology sh sometimes. And there's history of that too. Even in the Western Christian world, you had um, Elizabeth the first had an astrologer, you know? So, so, and they would, you know, make major decisions and uh, engage in uh, major implementations during certain astrological alignments because they think they think it gives them more power and stuff. You know, they're into that. You know, they're, they're like 
your your new age girl down the street you know, is trying to read your palm. It's really weird. I don't know. They're into that stuff. Hey, I guess if you have a lot of money, you know, you're just going to be into weird stuff because you can be. But sometimes they get really weird. Have you seen the Epstein, uh, you know, books? Have you read about what what Epstein was doing? Yeah. So anyway. Bit of a rant there. Uh, fertilizer prices hit new highs. Russian invasion exacerbating a food shortage. This is out of fa- farm policy news. And they say Bloomberg writer Elizabeth Elkin reported yesterday that fertilizer prices continue to surge to records as Russia's invasion of Ukraine puts a massive portion of the world's fertilizer supply at risk, adding to concerns over soaring global food inflation. The green market's North America fertilizer price index jumped almost 10% Friday and an all-time high as the market worries that potential sanctions on Russia, a big low-cost shipper of every major kind of crop nutrient, could disrupt global trade. Uh, The country accounted for almost a fifth of the 2021 fertilizer exports, according to the trade data monitor and Bloomberg's green markets. A fifth of the major components of fertilizer and the raw materials come from Russia. I mean, and if if all of that trade is disrupted by this war and these sanctions that everybody's putting on each other now, which it is uh, now disrupted because of this, um, I mean, a fifth of the supply, prices are going to skyrocket. And not only that, there's going to be shortages. And you're already hearing about farmers that um, – it, it, here's here's the secret, right? It's not that much of a secret, but here's the thing. A lot of these crop shortages and, and, and all of this that's going to happen isn't going to come to the fall, uh, till this fall. So, you know, a lot of these crops are being planted now. They're starting them now and they yield many of the crops at the end of the summer and into the fall. And this is when you're going to see all the shortages, not only prices skyrocket because of a shorter supply, but also shortages in and of themselves where there, no matter how much money you have, there isn't going to be enough food to feed the livestock, to feed you, to do anything. And this, I mean, especially in the developing world, it's going to get bad enough in the developed world. You know, here in the U S we have a lot of uh, farmland and stuff. So, and a lot of people can grow their own food, but you know, there's going to be a major lifestyle change coming for people, whether you like it or not. I'm not, especially if if you watch this channel, you're not going to starve because you're store, you're storing foods. If you have property, you, you have your own garden. Maybe you have some livestock stock, some chickens, right? Another great thing to do is to have rabbits and breed rabbits. And that way you can yield a, a good meat supply. My father down the road has rabbits. Rabbits, We're going to be breeding them. Uh, I'm going to be helping him breed them coming this uh, spring and, and summer. Um, and so you can become self-sustainable and, and it can help augment and, and fill the, the gap uh, for the coming shortages and skyrocketing prices too. So, you know, um, let's say there's only a few things you can buy at the store come next year. Um, and it's so much money. You can only afford a little bit. At least maybe you can supplement with your own, you know, chicken eggs or your own, uh, tomatoes you grew that you canned over the winter, uh, or your own, you know, onions and lettuce and stuff that you grew and, uh, maybe rabbits that you bred that you can, you know, uh, have a supply of, of rabbits. So this is the type of, um, mentality you have to have coming. Of course, always have, you know, some ammo and some guns too, if you, you know, if you can, so, so you can, uh, help defend your property because, you know, when people are starving, looting is going to increase. Crime is going to increase. Um, and then you got to think too, like what if gas gets to the point, it's like 20 bucks a gallon. I'm predicting 20 bucks a gallon. Um, I I know that sounds outrageous, but, uh, this is what they want. Like a great reset. Like this is, they're going to get serious about this and then coming with a coming cyber attack, you know, where maybe the electric grid, uh, goes down in certain areas of the country or a pipeline is hit, uh, you know, or or something like that. You're going to have energy, uh, crisis possibly and all who knows right so th- these are the types of things you got to be thinking about but, but going on further in this article here um 
Yes, I already read that. Elkin said that Russia has urged domestic fertilizer producers to reduce exports, further stoking fears of shortages. Uh, the war is uh, pushing up the cost of natural gas as well. The main input for most nitrogen fertilizer, uh, forcing some producers in Europe to cut output. In a separate article today, Elkin reported that Nutrien LTD, the world's largest fertilizer company, wants to expand its retail footprint in agricultural powerhouse Brazil. The company would love to do more mergers and acquisitions um, and to further deals in Brazil, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so they're just talking about the, you know, the soybean uh, prices too. So, I mean, we can talk more about, about that too. So you have here another one out of Yahoo news. The CEO of one of the world's largest fertilizer companies says there will be a food crisis because of the war in Ukraine. And the question is just how large it will be. The CEO of Yara Interna international, a major fertilizer producer told the wall street journal that there will be a food crisis. Bloomberg Green Markets North America Fertilizer Price Index jumped 10% Friday, all-time high, sweeping sanctions over the Ukraine war, limiting fertilizer su supplies from producers in Russia. So many of the top CEOs on fertilizer are saying this too. And just ask the local farmers. This is going to be a huge issue. Everything is needs fertilizer to yield that max amount of crops to feed you folks. So, I mean, it's not just going to be, it's not just going to be one crop. You know, you're, you, this is going to be ubiquitous and, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, it's just like the perfect, it's just like the perfect recipe for, for what these people want. Let me show you what these people want. This is a video from the world economic forum. They put this out in like 2016, 2017, this video. Eight predictions for the world in 2030. This is before COVID and everything. They 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 put this out. I've played this video before. I haven't played it in a while, but they actually took this video down because there was so much criticism for it. This is where they say you will own nothing and be happy. This is their vision for the future. The, these people control all of the Western de democratized governments, the liberal governments, okay? They control all of them. The... Biden, Trudeau, Bojo, okay, um, all of these prime ministers and presidents, Australia, New Zealand, they are all on board with this agenda. They all use the Build Back Better slogan that is the World Economic Forum slogan, and they all pay homage to the World Economic Forum openly. This isn't a secret. You know, guys, like this is the thing. It's not like it's a like secret cabal or anything. This is kind of like an open, openly discussed thing but it's not highly publicized in the mainstream collective like to the average NPC and it's not repeated over and over again on CNN. So the average person has no clue about this. They think none of these countries are connected. None of these events are connected, but it's all openly uh, connected and it's bringing about their agenda and there it's not like a secret. So, so let's just play this video that they publicly put out. But since it's deleted, but it's still everywhere because once you post something on the internet, you can't, you can't really delete it. So let's check it out. Eight predictions for the world in 2030. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. That's a very famous. <laughs> well, it's famous in most circles, at least people I know. No, I've heard of that uh, phrase, right? You'll own nothing and be happy. That's the future they want for you. Does that sound like something you voted for? Is that something you want? Really? You'll own nothing and be happy? Whatever you want, you'll rent, and it'll be delivered by drone. So whatever you want, you'll rent. You're not going to own anything. And by the way, you renting things will be subject to whether or not you have a good social credit score and whether you've had your latest booster shot. Right. That's sort of that. That's literally the, the, the plan. OK, you have to be on board with their agenda. You need to get that mark or else they're, they're not you're not going to be able to rent. You're not going to be able to do anything. Right. Um, you're going to have to go live in the woods. Right. With in, in the freedom ghettos. That's what they that's what they're going to call them. The freedom ghettos. The U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. 
at, we're seeing happen right before our eyes. This is literally the fall of the United States global empire. Um, you know, all good things come to an end. Uh, I, you know, th this is, this is kind of like a, um, an interesting question. And, and it's also, you know, somebody like me, I guess you could even include Canada in here too. You know, in the U.S. and Canada, we we have lived such a privileged, easy lifestyle because the United States was the world superpower and the U.S. dollar was the world reserve currency. That's ending really soon, by the way. Um, you already you already have China talking, or or Saudi Arabia and China talking about how uh, the Saudis might start purchasing and selling oil in Chinese yuan. And if the US dollar loses the world reserve currency, your average American will have a standard of living that is nowhere near to what it is now or nowhere near to what it was the past few decades. Nowhere close. Uh, it, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. And we will become a second tier nation. So I will say this, it is good militaristically. I don't even want to say this because we get so so many benefits from this as Americans. You know, us us being the world superpower and telling people what to do. You know, this is why like it, it, at the same time I don't think we should be doing so much of that, but I would love to see the the uh, global reserve currency uh, remain as the U.S. dollar, uh, and I would love to see us remain as a global superpower uh, because it benefits me. I mean, like, but at the same time, I don't think we should be like controlling and destroying other nations and putting in puppets. I think we should leave people alone. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword, I guess. But anyway. A handful of countries will dominate. Notice what flags are up there. You know? You won't die waiting for an organ donor. Cool, whatever. You won't transplant organs. We'll print new ones instead. And again, they always mix in these sort of empty platitudes that make this whole agenda sound great. Even though you'll own nothing and be happy. And the U.S. is just going to collapse as a global superpower. They're like, okay, the, a collapse of a great civilization. Um, everything you'll you'll get, it'll be delivered by a robot and you're going to rent it. Like this doesn't sound like anything. Nobody voted for the world. Like the World Economic Forum, it's just, they just, they just declare, it was, it was invented by Klaus Schwab. You know, they just declare their own power. It's just like, yeah, we're the World Economic Forum. <laughs> Nobody votes for them, you know? Klaus Schwab, he, he, you know, it goes back to like the seventies, but you know, this is, this is like, it's just so unfair. You'll eat much less meat. See, that's another huge part of the agenda guys. And it's funny how in 2020 and even in 2021, a lot of these shortages you saw, especially during the pandemic when the lockdowns happened it, it was meat shortages, and that's going to be probably the number one thing that rises in price because that is designed that way. That's going to be the number one food, uh, you know, that is going to be the hardest to come by and the most difficult to buy, which really pisses me off, off you know, um, being, you know, uh, at least mostly carnivore. It's very, very sad because meat is a superfood. It's absolutely the best food for you in the world. I think, I think red meat is, and some people disagree with me on this, but you know, there's new research coming out that it's actually a superfood, you know, like ribeye steaks and, and even like salmon though, too, Sam, I just had some salmon today. Eggs. These are all superfoods. These are great foods. You can live off these primarily, just get a little more fat in there and you are good to go and you'll be as healthy as a horse. So you know, all these nutrients too, you can get from meat. They want to cut meat out of the global diet because they want you dependent on them and they want you weak and easily uh, controllable. You know, that's the agenda. So 
there's there's been instances throughout history, especially in communism, and even the Nazis, I think, did it a little bit too, where they would intentionally and purposely, you know, withhold meat and other foods from from certain populations that they wanted to uh, oppress uh, in order to make them more easily controllable because they're not as nutritious. They're not as healthy and they're not as energetic and they're not as fervent. They're not as likely to uh, foment a revolution if they're not well nourished. They'll do it to armies, obviously, too. You know, I mean, this is this is what I'm talking about. And you tell any of these World Economic Forum types that's using the mili- the U.S. military um, for so long, these globalists have used the U.S. military as their a uh, strong arm as their uh, world police force, right? Um, why don't you tell them to stop giving the military meat? I'm sure they would love to do that. No, they would never do that because they know the soldiers need meat uh, and protein and a good source of of animal food um, to to actually execute um, really strenuous, complex. Uh, activities. So they're talking about meat still here, an occasional treat, not a staple for the good of the environment and our health. (sighs) Give me a break. And they always use that empty platitude too. Oh, it's for the good of the environment. Guys, this is all, it's all scam. Okay. To, uh, use as a pretext to be able to take away your freedoms and then take away your, your life, you know, your lifestyle, eating meat, for instance. A billion people will just be displaced by climate change. You ever hear of harp? Look, I'm not like an expert on weather modification and stuff like that, but some do theorize that, you know, Many elements of the deep state uh, and the globalists uh, have access to secret industrial technologies that aren't released to the public, whether it's like quasi military um, or, you know, totally off the book CIA deep state military um, or even privatized like secretive groups, like a breakaway of civilization where they have all this technology to do crazy stuff, like enhance hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff. Actually, a lot of that is declassified. I mean, you can just look it up, you know, just look at, look up cloud seeding and geoengineering. It's actually not, it's, it's not, it's not hidden at this point. It's very well known. I mean, Bill Gates even talked about how he wants to maybe block out the sun. I mean, just think about how much of a psychopath you'd have to be to want to do that. He wants to block out the sun uh, with with geoengineering type of uh, activities um, to stop global warming. So I don't know. We'll have to do a better job of welcoming and integrating refugees. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to basically erase the face of every country, of every nation, of every culture and heritage. And, you know, it, it, culture and heritage in nations are important because it acts as a firewall against globalism in all countries. And this is why they want to erase that, you know, to integrate the world into this like world order, uh, you know, uh, culturally and, and and racially too. You know, they they don't because because race and culture, you know, it does it. They do play into each other, you know. So yeah, polluters will have to pay the carbon tax, whatever. There'll be a global price on carbon, which blah, 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 blah. yeah, fossil fuels. Yeah, well, that's interesting. There'll be a global price on carbon. This will help make fossil fuels history. Notice the price of gas, all-time highs. Um, notice the uh, you know introduction of electric cars uh, as going mainstream. You see some of these news outlets saying, hey, you can't afford gas. You're too poor to afford gas. Just buy a Tesla. It's like, you know, the cheapest Tesla is like 50 grand. This is BS, right? You guys, this is how detached these people are. It's like, yeah, again, Marie Antoinette, let let them eat cake. Mars, blah, blah, blah. Scientists will have to work out, blah, 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 how to, how, okay. Yeah, 
alien life. That's another thing they're going to introduce. Probably like they're probably going to say like, oh, we're actually descendants of aliens and they're coming back. And look, oh, here they are. They'll fake like an alien deception or something. And they'll say, oh, look, here are the aliens. And they're telling us that we need to get our act together and get rid of all nations and all borders and get rid of uh, meat. And you can't eat meat anymore. Sorry. And we got to have a new world currency and it's going to be digital. And we're going to have a social credit score. Sorry. Get vaccinated. They said they get vaccinated too, guys. Oh, look at this one. Western values will have been tested to the breaking point. Western values. What do you think of when you think of Western values? Let's see. Christianity, freedom, individual choice, uh, you know, things like that. The family. Yeah, that's going to be tested to the breaking point. In other words, we're just going to get rid of that probably. So. Checks and balances that underpin our democracies must not be forgotten. Empty platitude again. So, you know, you got all this going on and, you know, a lot of these events we're seeing in the news just so happen to line up and point toward a world in which a lot of this is seems inevitable, I guess. I guess it's just how the chips fall. It's how the cookie crumbles. Totally just incidental. They just came out with these initiatives. And this is just a little taste of it. Um, years before, all of a sudden, they had all of these things just happen. It just so happens this way, you know? Now that fertilizer is at an all-time high because Russia decides to invade Ukraine, right? Um, yeah, so you got all this happening. Uh, really interesting here. Uh, grain prices just skyrocketing. Um, where are we at? Wheat prices uh, hit a 14-year high. Food shortages uh, happening. Uh, fear of rising food prices. All of this. Um, Russia and Ukraine account for around 29% of global wheat exports. 29% of the world's wheat comes from Russia and Ukraine. That's a third. That's like almost. That was. That's a, that's almost a third of the the world's wheat. People are gonna starve. That along with inflation in and of itself, rising gas prices and rising fertilizer prices and and shortages in fertilizer, the wheat itself. Where are we gonna get all this wheat now? I mean, this is bad. It's bad. Canadian cattle producers desperate as feed shortages re reaches crisis levels. So we have all of this happening. Fifteen percent of the world's calories come from wheat. So fifteen percent of of all of the world's calories, how people don't starve, comes from wheat. And if you cut out a third of those wheat exports because of the Russia-Ukraine situation, then you have a potential for a starving nation, right? And multiple starving nations, a starving world. It's just like Revelation said, there'd be famines. Well, you have uh, the book of Mark and Matthew talking about how there would be famines in the end times. That's what Jesus said. But he also said there'll be wars and rumors of wars, and you know that's not the end yet. That's a little, um, a, a little uh, breadcrumb for all my Christian listeners there. Uh, yeah, 15% of the world's calorie intake comes from wheat. So, now, while all this is happening, you have this really interesting statement from the White House. It's from Ann Neuberger. She's the United States Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology. So check it out. This could exacerbate the situation even worse, particularly in the United States. Urging private sector partners to take immediate action to shore up their defenses against potential cyber attacks. We've previously warned about the potential for Russia to conduct cyber attacks against the United States including as a, re as a response to the unprecedented economic costs 
that the U.S. and allies and partners impose in response to Russia's further invasion of Ukraine. Today, we are reiterating those warnings, and we're doing so based on evolving threat intelligence that the Russian government is exploring options for potential cyber attacks on critical infrastructure in the United States. So there you go. They're sort of spelling out what's going to happen. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, I don't know, like, and it's, it's always going to be impossible to tell. Um, you know, when it does happen, it's certainly going to happen, just so you know. Uh, so I am predicting in either April, May, or June, I mean, at some point between now and the end of this year, you're going to have one or multiple major cyber attacks occur on the United States infrastructure. Which infrastructure? I can't say for sure, obviously. Uh, you know, I have some theories. Maybe it could be something in the food supply to do with, you know, um, uh, manufacturing in, in that regard or production, uh, possibly oil supply, gas, uh, ele- you know, the electric grid, um, the energy sector in some other way. Um I mean, it could be the financial system. I don't really know, but this is definitely coming. When they make statements like this, and then by the way, just like with Event 201 that I mentioned, where you had Event 201, then a couple months later, you had the exact thing that that drill was training to prepare for. Of course, it was put forth and held by University of John Hopkins, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the World Economic Forum. Right, These are the same people that will take a crisis, not let it go to waste, at least for their ends, and implement the exact measures they've been talking about implementing for decades and, you know, been foaming at the mouth to to, to put forth in, in society. So all of these things like vaccine passports, etc. cetera. Um, so this is what I'm talking about. And then you have the cyber polygon worldwide drill uh, that occurred last year. And this was what the World Economic Forum, same one of the same groups with Event 201, um, had. And this was a multi-day event that simulates a cyber pandemic, a worldwide cyber attack. Okay? Uh, I mean, this is the, the writing is on the wall. This is going to happen. I, I, I just, this is them telling you, right? All you got to do is watch Resisting the Reset or anybody who covers this stuff and you can literally predict the future and prepare for it. You know how useful this is? They're telling, they're, they're laying out the plan. They're telling you, this is what we're going to do. Look, Newberger saying this is making it known, especially to the elite, like this is imminent. Okay, we're announcing this in this way at this White House press conference to let people know. Okay, th- this is part of the plan out of the cyber pandemic. Of course, you can have many uh, pretexts um, that will that will, many solutions that will be put forth. That of course uh, benefits their agenda twenty thirty great reset plans. To do many of the things I just showed you in that video, uh, you know, reduce carbon emissions, change up the power grid. I mean, obviously, with with gas prices in and of itself, itself, you're already seeing like the switch to electric vehicles, or at least the attempted switch to electric vehicles. Um, the reduction in consumption of meat that, of course, Bloomberg is now suggesting <laughs> because of because of all this, right? Um, and this is, you know, this is how they 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 change the world. Now, the next thing we're going to see as well is obviously more inflation. That's inevitable. We all know that. And that's not going away. That's not a secret. There, even the Fed uh, came out and announced, like, okay, inflation is going to continue, guys. Remember when they said it was transitory? Like a year and a half ago, they were saying the inflation's transitory. It's like for a few months, it's going to be fine. It'll stop. Don't worry about it. I thought they were the experts. I thought they were the ones that like knew what they were talking about. I'm the guy on the internet screaming like this isn't transitory at the time. This is going to, 
keep on going. It's about the collapse of the dollar and the introduction of a digital currency, a CBDC digital currency controlled by the Fed, centralized, not decentralized like Bitcoin. I I've been talking about this for so long, but I'm the conspiracy theorist and weirdo, even though I it turned out to be right and they were wrong. Okay. Inflation at its highest rate in 40 years. The data for February suggested basically like an 8% inflation rate for that month. Oh, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, you know? And then Biden, just a few weeks ago, takes a huge step toward government-backed digital currency in his new executive order. So what this executive order entailed is a study into digital currencies and the creation of a U.S. central bank digital currency. The move is part of a sweeping executive order President Joe Biden signed Wednesday instructing the federal government to explore possible uses of and regulations for digital assets like cryptocurrency. My administration places the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and development or deployment options of a United States CBDC. The order asks for a wide variety of agencies to begin research and submit reports on a variety of issues surrounding digital currencies from design and security to financial and societal impacts. We know that the impl implications of potentially issu issuing a digital dollar are profound, they're extraordinarily wide-ranging, a senior administration official told reporters on a call Tuesday. Um, da -da -da -da. So I'm just I'm just seeing if any more of this is actually relevant. What I want to talk about here: uh, the Fed published a white paper in January about potentially creating a CBDC that would complement existing payment systems. It found that the CDBC could make payments cheaper and easier for consumers, but might also pose a risk to the stability of the U.S. financial system, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the U.S. would not be the first country, country with a digital currency. China has introduced its own CBDC with more than 140 million people having opened digital wallets. And many other countries have either enrolled out or are, or ha have either rolled out or are developing digital currencies. The Bahamas sand dollar is considered among the world's successful digital currencies. By the way, China's digital yuan has an expiration date on some of its currency, so you have to spend it by a certain time. Total control. It also they're able to shut down at whim anybody who opposes the state or opposes their financial system in a way they don't like. Whether it's politically, whether it's ideologically, whether your social credit score isn't high enough. They'll just shut down your wallet. They'll just make it so you can't do anything, right? It's all centralized, and that's the difference. See, um, a lot of people will say, well, Bitcoin was put forth by the CIA. I'm not even saying it definitely wasn't. I mean, maybe it was, but one thing you know about Bitcoin for sure is it's decentralized. There's no central controller. I think things are just more obvious and plainly stated than, than, than a lot of people want to accept. When you have Bitcoin and the government, at least for a long time, didn't like it, yeah, the creator is anonymous, which is a little shady, but it's actually better that way because if they weren't anonymous, then anything they say would affect, you know, the the, the public perception of the of, of Bitcoin. But you know, uh, it is decentralized, and the government doesn't really like it because they can't control it. But they're going to take that technology. Uh, the distributed ledger, and they're going to, in their own satanic fashion, sort of invert it and make it centralized so that the Fed controls it and they have total control and oversight of the currency in that network. So it's like the opposite of Bitcoin in a way. And uh, they're going to make it so that's the new digital currency that they want everyone to use. So it's kind of like what they always do with like great art or great technologies or great 
cultural things or even religions, things like this. They'll take all of that, all the great things that humanity builds and invents and creates, and they'll invert it in their own way to control people and to enslave people. So that's sort of like how I see it. And this is all being done through something called the Hamilton Project. So the Hamilton Project is basically a test run and uh, a study into how they're going to uh, implement this the new digital dollar, CBDC. Um, and I'm going to read here out of this article. The MIT and the Boston Federal Reserve give digital do dollar, CBDC, a modest test run. Blockchain-based architecture was deemed not a good match as researchers weighed several technological designs. The world recently got a sneak peek at what a digital dollar, or at least one component of a hypothetical United States central bank digital dollar, might look like, courtesy of the Hamilton, uh, the Project Hamilton. By the way, Hamilton was one of the founding fathers of America who wanted, from the start, to create a central bank. Uh, basically controlled by private bankers, and the other founding fathers told them to go go screw, and that it was a really bad idea, and they fought tooth and nail, and in fact, the War of 1812, I believe, well, I don't know, no, 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 actually, it was a little bit after that, after, well, Colonel Jackson was the, the general, uh, one of the generals during 1812, the War of 1812, but then he became president, and one of his flagship initiatives was to keep out the central bankers from the U.S., and we didn't have a central bank or at least a privately controlled central bank in the United States until 1913, um, where Woodrow Wilson totally sold us out to a uh, basically a global private independent central bank financial system um, that, you know, this group of bankers uh, just had the authority to do whatever they want in terms of our money supply and interest rates and all of that. So Woodrow Wilson, a total tra traitor to the, the country. Uh, Andrew Jackson, one of the greatest American heroes uh, of all time. So just a, a little history lesson there. I'm not like an expert at that kind of stuff, but I mean... You know, it's pretty well known, a lot of this. So, moving on in the article. A collaborative effort uh, for the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and the MIT Digital Currency Initiative. That's the Hamilton Project. The results of the project's first phase were, initially, were in originally expected last summer, but were released on February 3rd. The project, announced in 2020, is named in honor of Al Alexander Hamilton, the first U.S. Treasury Secretary, and Margaret Hamilton, an MIT staffer who contributed to NASA's Apollo program. We can all trust NASA, right? <laughs> Researchers developed two open source models of transaction processing software called Open CBDC for the technology agnostic project. The researchers note in the project's white paper that tech, uh, technical and policy changes are highly interdependent and that these choices are, are more granular and with more permutations than commonly discussed. Only one of the models used distributed ledger technology. That's distributed ledger technology is like the decentralized distributed ledger, which is good in my opinion. Again, only one of the models used distributed ledger technology, but it turned out to be less satisfactory with technology described with this technology described as not needed. So the whole point here being they don't want a decentralized currency, right? They want a centralized, highly controlled currency. It's really interesting too that of all the models they ran for their CBDC, they only even tried one that had distributed ledger technology. Yeah, because these guys don't want that, right? They don't want to, like, that's why they only tried one model with that. It's like, we got to pay at least some homage to it. Pretend we tried, you know? And there was like, and then they came to the conclusion that it's less satisfactory and it's not needed, right? Yeah. It is needed if you want people to trust it and actually use it, but okay. The distributed ledger model was not a good match, quote unquote, for the project due to its performance. The project assumed administration by a central actor, of course, right? 
and the model was modified accordingly. However, it created performance bottlenecks and the requirement that the central uh, transaction processor maintain transaction history slowed throughput significantly. The alternative model's two-phase commit architecture supported a range of potential privacy options without central storage of transaction history, although the researchers acknowledged that it presented greater challenges for auditing. The distributed ledger model had a peak throughput of approximately 170,000 transactions per second, while the competing model, which processed transactions in parallel on multiple computers, had a throughput of 1.7 million transactions per second and, show, and showed linear scalability with the addition of more servers. So obviously one of the, the downfalls, and this is well known in the crypto space, by the way, one of the downfalls of having decentralization is uh, transactions per second, right? It does take longer if you want that additional layer of trust and that additional layer of security of a decentralized model, but it's 10 times more fair. It's 10 times more, uh, it's probably a hundred times more fair, but it's also a hundred times more secure and it's a hundred times more um of the people, you know, it doesn't have like a central controller that can shut you down at, at whim, that can just turn off your wallet or have your currency um, be rendered with an expiration date. So you have to spend it if they want the economy to boost up, you know, these sort of control management economy, Keynesian economics is, is what these people want, right? This is MIT and the Boston Fed, really? These guys are clowns, bro. Come on. Um, the second and, parent and apparently last phase of Project Ham Hamilton will determine technical and performance trade-offs associated with various designs. Researchers have promised to look at privacy, auditability, programmability, interoperability, and more. Boston Fed Executive Vice uh, President Jim Kuna said in a press call that we'll be defining a number of use cases that focus on different design and possible policy questions, adding, for example, if one policy goal was to maximize privacy and the other is to stop criminal activity, those create conflicts from a technology perspective in how you design the system. Yeah. It wouldn't, there's no way they would actually have like a private system. This is the government. They want to be able to audit you, obviously. Um, So the, the release of the Hamilton Project Phase 1 results come simultaneously with China's attempt to scale up its rollout of the digital yuan at the Winter Olympics. The contrast between the United States and China level of CBDC development could not be starker. And those behind Project Hamilton uh, took pains not to overstate the project's place in American CBDC development. MIT Digital Currency Initiative Director... Naha Narula said in a statement, it is important to note that the project is not a comment on whether or not the U.S. should issue a CBDC, but work like this is, a vi is vital to help determine the answer to that question, she added. The policy conversation around central bank digital currency is still in its infancy. The scatter shoot, by the way, World Economic Forum it's heavily invested in this too, not just here in the U.S. with MIT and the Boston Fed, all that. The World Economic Forum, their entire previous Davos meeting in 2021 was about crypto. Like more than half of it was about crypto and distributed ledger technology and also centralized ledger technology type of initiatives, right? And then, you know, they talked about the different decentralized cryptos too because that can those are just platforms it's like the internet it can be used for good or bad it can be used for everything everyone can use it there's no it's permissionless right and that's the great thing about it whether you're just like a a peasant farmer in india or something or you're just regular american dude like me or you're klaus schwab and you want to create a new world order you can use bitcoin you can you can do what you want on the platform you can build apps in the ethereum platform uh, or Cardano, you can use, I mean, anyone can use it. So it's like, that's why they're interested in it too. They, they're they not going to be able to control those systems, uh, the, 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 the centralized ones, but they can still 
build platforms on top of them that they can control. And then they can also take what they learn from how they operate and, you know, put it into a more centralized controllable system or, or, or less transparent system that they can control fully. You have one of their, I think, brainchilds, uh, the internet computer. That's like a, that's like a crypto project. It's called like the global internet computer. Uh, I believe um, the world internet computer where it's kind of like a fake Ethereum they're trying to build in which a lot of it isn't transparent. It seems the world economic forum, a lot of these globalist types are behind it and they want to sort of compete with the just natural cryptocurrencies that are decentralized and came from nerds like Vitalik Buterin that are just like, you know, autistic dudes in their basement, hackers and all the programmers that are just uh, kind of like these anarcho-libertarians uh, that are super into programming that's just building crypto platforms, you know? So they're trying to compete with that, with their world internet computer, and then also the CBDCs that are going to be issued by the government. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I will just read this last paragraph in the article real quick, then wrap this up. Uh, the scatter shoot, the scatter shot nature of that conversion is apparently at a glance, the fed steadfastly refuses to take a stance on a CBDC reiterating its neutral position in a paper released last month. So the feds writing papers on this too, by the way. I, I remember reading some of this paper they released, by the way, uh, that they are interested in creating a CBDC, but you know, they're kind of not fully announcing that yet because they don't, they don't understand it yet. Institutions always take a long time. The same week, representative Tom Emmer, a Republican from Minnesota introduced a bill to prohibit the fed from issuing a, a retail CBDC claiming such a law would keep the Fed off an insidious path toward authoritarianism. Completely agree, Tom Emmer. This is what I mean. There are still some people in Congress that understand the deal here, right? A bill that stops the, CD, the, the, the Fed from issuing a retail CBDC, such a good idea, because it would stop this, this authoritarian path. Not long afterward, Bank of America issued a note calling a CBDC inevitable, of course, right? Of course the banks want it. The big banks control the Fed anyway. The Fed is welcoming comments on Project Hamilton via an online forum with 22 questions. The project is also hiring a new product management director. Boom. So get ready. I think you're going to see another bull run in the crypto market or another leg of this current bull run. I think we've been in the same bull run since 2020, by the way, but it was just like a little bit of a dip the past year. It's actually been going sideways the past year. If you look at Bitcoin, and some of the cryptos, but anyways, guys, get ready, get ready. The great reset is upon us. They're announcing the cyber attacks. They're announcing the collapse of the dollar to bring about a CBDC in a few years. This is going to be the most dramatic 10 years of your life, the most dramatic 10 years of the world ever. We might even have a nuclear war. So, so these are the types of things you got to, you know, understand, you know, you're going to be dealing with a, a, you're dealing with a world government. You're dealing with a vast technological landscape of an ever-changing information culture you're, you're, you're dealing with um, possible famines, hyperinflation, uh, you know, increase of crime as soon as that kicks in, you know, with the food shortages. And then you're, you're dealing with all kinds of things. So this is my warning. Uh, take heed. But also, hey, keep watching. Stay tuned. Uh, uh, hit subscribe and also give this video a good thumbs up. Um, and share the information. Very, very important. And then also, if you want to contribute to the channel and help, you know, build the channel here at Resisting the Reset, I have a Patreon you can uh, contribute to. Um, I also have crypto links for like Bitcoin and, and Litecoin and stuff. If you want to send some crypto my way, 
Uh, but uh, most importantly, you know, just give this video a thumbs up and share it and hit, hit subscribe and the notification bell so you're notified when I make a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter and Gab because I'm always posting on those platforms, you know. Other than that, it's been pressed. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.